Hello, my loyal listeners. Thanks so much for supporting the podcast. This experiment is turning into a much bigger success than I could have imagined. That's thanks to you. So please keep on subscribing and sharing. My goal is 1,000 downloads by Remembrance Day. Since this podcast is actually getting downloaded, guess what? Businesses actually want to pay me to advertise for them. Who would have thought? So I'm proud to be sponsored by Boris, who happens to be a great buddy of mine and an up-and-coming jiu-jitsu champ and his company, B-Air. If you live in or around the West Island of Montreal and your house felt like a Russian sauna last year, give him a call. Boris will hook you up with the best AC unit, all professionally installed and done with the highest level of customer care on the market today. That's no bullshit either. He's installed at my house. Check him out on Facebook at B Air, that's capital B period Air, A-I-R, or go to his website at www.montrealfurnacefilters.com. He's also a proud Army veteran and brings that work ethic and pride to work every day and refuses to let any of his clients down. Are you guys aware that I wrote a book? Yeah, that's right. I wrote a book. It's called The Nimble Warrior. It's a guide to moving better, improving performance, and reducing injury. So why did I write this book? Well, after I got back from Afghanistan, I was a bit banged up. I kind of screwed up my back. And slowly but surely, I started just degenerating to the point where I couldn't really move properly and I couldn't enjoy the things that I really enjoyed in life, like training and playing sports and playing with my son. So you know what? I said, I got to make a change, and I did. So I worked with a coach, and I found out all kinds of new cool shit that I put in the book that helped me get from being kind of immobile and stuck in bed to being able to do all the things I love again. So check out the book. The link is in the show notes, the nimblewarriorbook.com. Head to the website and you know what? I'm giving my book away for free. All I need to do is cover shipping and handling. I've got limited quantity. So get on it, hop on it, get it. And even better than that, You get a book, I give $1 to the Wounded Warriors Canada Fund. How's that sound? All right, guys, let's get to the episode. Boom. Another great episode lined up for you guys. We're talking with Jordana Cavanaugh, fellow graduate of the class of 1999, bitches. And she's a badass yoga instructor. So listen up. We're going to be talking about a lot of female stuff in here. So ladies, finally, an episode just for you. And we're talking about pregnancy, but we're also talking about things like anal clenching. Holy shit. And we're talking about things that uh, can really help you prevent uh, back injuries, shoulder injuries, and just getting your yoga flow on, man. And how important that is for just everybody across the board to really be a bit more nimble. All right, guys. Enjoy the episode. Jordana Cavanaugh. Welcome to the Hard to Kill Podcast, the go-to podcast for military, LEO, and EMS professionals. Sharing ideas and experiences from around the world to make you hard to kill. Here's your host, Dave Morrow. All right, ladies and gents, my guest today is my friend and fellow Beaconsfield High School class of 99 grad, Jordana Cavanaugh. Jordana is a certified yoga teacher through Moda International. She's a certified esthetician and combines health and wellness from the inside out. So me and Jordana reconnected in 2010. Um, I was sweating my way through a, a hot yoga class and my disgusting puddle of sweat started to like creep towards her mat a little bit. Um, but she was cool like she always has been. And uh, so that was basically my pre-deployment preparation for heat shock before I got over there. And uh, But not only that, uh, Jordana is a killer uh, yoga instructor and helped me out uh, by providing my book launch with a really good yoga session last month. So uh, the point of today's show is to talk about the importance of something like yoga for us guys and gals that are in the sheepdog community. So Jordana, welcome to the show. Really glad you can make it. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Absolutely. Awesome. So, um, Jordana, like we go way back, but there was like a huge gap from the time we graduated high school till now. And obviously you got a lot on the go. Um, you're a personal trainer. You're now a top notch yoga instructor. Um, can you explain kind of how you got to where you are now 
and sure. uh, fill our listeners in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, at a very young age, I was a gym rat. And I think it has a lot to do with my mom in the early 80s being an aerobics instructor. And I was that little little girl in the back with our headband and our leg warmers, sort of doing like that whole Jane Fonda thing. So that really got me into fitness, like the best. And um, so I always thought about moving my body in more of a fitness way than an athletic way, if that makes sense. Like I love to work out at the gym, but I never like to play sports, especially um, team sports. I was always into rock climbing or I would do like tennis, you know, when you're just like one person against another singles. Um, but I still love to, to train. Um, so I think I was 13 the first time I got my first uh, gym membership. And I just started like getting curious of the weights and the muscles and just learning about the body. And in school, I mean, we only had a certain amount of time that was physical education. And then we had, you know, math and sciences and everything else. And when I left school and I went into university, I never thought of sciences. I just was very creative and I went into English literature and I um, graduated with a Bachelor of Arts. And when I left university, I realized that I was spending all of my time running to the gym, going to the gym. And I was like, okay, well, maybe this could be something more than just a hobby. So that's when I went to, um, I did my Canadian fitness professional certification. I became a personal trainer and I was working. Um, for a few years in that world. And it was very demanding when you have clients and it's one-on-one, -on -one, um, you're in it for them, right? And they talk throughout the workout and it's a lot about customizing about what they need, but very superficial, right? Like the results that they want on the outside. And when I was training a lot, I felt like my muscles were getting super tight. They were getting really bulky and my flexibility and my range of motion was diminishing. And I'm a very flexible person. So this was very uncomfortable for me. Um, and that's when I started doing hot yoga. Um, and I immediately fell in love. I was like, this is not just a physical body thing. This is like, this is deep. This is your breathing. This is your energy. This is your way, sorry, there's a B. <laughs> this is your way of like being. So, you know, growing up, I grew up in a, in, a, in a Jewish household and I never felt really connected to my religion, but I always believed, and this might sound kind of hokey, but I always believed in myself. And when I sort of looked into yoga and that spiritual path, they sort of say like spirituality is about believing in yourself and religion is sometimes when you're believing in something outside of yourself. So my whole world changed. It wasn't just like my body, my flexibility, how I felt on the outside, but it was like this calmness, this happiness, this openness on the inside. And the thing about yoga, and I'm sure that you know, and whoever's listening who practices yoga, is it becomes emotional. When you're targeting certain parts of your body, you understand, oh, my energy is blocked here, or I'm really vulnerable right here. And your body's telling you things, and we just need to listen sorry would that uh i'm pretty ignorant of this would that be the chakras are we talking chakras now it could be chakras it could be chakras in yoga um the energy is called prana mm. in i think chinese medicine is called chi so it's all the same thing and yes the source comes from the spine right like the short the spine is where all the the nerve endings are that connects to the muscles connects to the brain so we do have seven chakras that come from the crown all the way to the base of the pelvic floor that's different energy, different colors. So if you're really into energy and feeling, oh, you know, my chest is feeling a little bit tight. Maybe it's not your chest. Maybe it's actually your heart, you know, or like something's going on in my hip. Is it really something going on in your hip or are you holding on to something emotionally? So I think yoga takes every aspect of your being and sort of looks at it in a more, I would say, spiritual way and also a holistic way interesting yeah. interesting um yeah I, I i started the practice strictly for a fitness point of view i i never did yoga a day in my life and the first session i ever did was a hot yoga session um <laughs> at your at your at the yoga studio in ndg and it kicked the shit out of me because i like i, I know i wrote a book about being nimble but like it's tongue-in-cheek like i'm really not nimble i do my right. i do my best 
And um, so for me, yoga has always been more of a, it, it's more based on being able to be, have some longevity in my career and have some longevity just being able to move properly. But it's never really been like that spiritual, spiritual thing for me. Um, so for you know people that are listening that you know may look at yoga as like oh we're talking about like spirituality and shit like that's mm -hmm. right like especially dudes that you know like a combat veterans and stuff like it, as soon as you hear like spirituality it's like okay no i'm done i'm done time out so yeah. how how can this really because uh, i, I want to convey this message because it's really like right. I, I really enjoy it and uh, i want to convey kind of that that message but i know you can explain it a lot better how how would it really benefit let's say that the individual is like, no, I don't want to get into that like hippie shit and like yeah. talk about my, talk about my energy, bro. Like I'm good. Right. Yeah. Um, it starts as a physical practice and that's kind of the point. It's like you go in for the workout expecting a workout and then if and when you're open, certain things kind of trigger. A teacher says something and it lands at the right time in your life. You know what I mean? It could be just a physical practice and that's fine for a lot of people. Um, but I don't know, I don't think, I, me personally, I just always wanna learn and I always wanna evolve. I wanna evolve as life evolves. Um, and I think that getting older, you can also get a lot wiser. So when you go in for something, you might have these expectations. You might even be closed off and be like, I don't want any of, any of this, what you call a hippie shit. I just wanna get my sweat on. That was my battery. Are we okay? Yeah. Um, so allow the physical practice to bring you into the room and maybe you're just breathing and maybe you're just not thinking and that's all you need for an hour and that's enough. There's no like, oh, I'm a better yogi, you're a better yogi. That stuff doesn't exist. So I think that at a certain point, if you do want to go deeper, you read a certain book or you read a quote or you have a conversation with somebody at the yoga studio so that you're open to hopefully keep evolving. Hmm. So where would you recommend, like, where, like, where do you, where do essentially you start? Like, cause where do you I, start? I, yeah. Like, I mean, I, I found like, just because of my nature, I was like, no, I'm going hard. So I, I picked like, I was, I think I, my first class was like an hour and a half flow in that. Right. I'm just like, I'm, this is, this yeah. is the hardest shit I've ever done in my life. Like I, I right. can't finish it. So where, where would you recommend, like, just to, just to get like your, your feet wet. So it's not like, oh, I'm not doing yeah. this bullshit. Um, and it's so funny just going back on what you said that like, you've never done it before, but you're like, Oh, I want to do the hardest class ever. That's the ego. The ego is telling you like what it wants and how it wants something that it doesn't even know what it is yet. You know? And what then you put yourself in a position where you're uncomfortable, which is fine but that could also be the wrong way to move towards something like yoga. Like I would say the studio that I work at Modo and they're all over the world, Modo, M-O-D-O, -O, um, their half a class, which is called Modo, no matter where you go, it's either 60 minutes or 75 or English or French, or Spanish. Um, it's, it's a very accessible practice for people who are pregnant, people who have herniated discs, people who've never done yoga before, people who are what they consider like the best yogis ever. So it could be a class for everybody and you decide how intensely you work or how passive you work or even just to give yourself a break sometimes, right? Like especially for people like you who are training hard all the time and then you go to yoga, you're not going to yoga for a workout, right? Maybe you're going to relax your muscles and stretch your muscles because all you're doing is strengthening your muscles. They say a healthy muscle is a muscle that can both contract and relax. That dichotomy, that dichotomy is huge. Um, yeah. Because a lot of times uh, with our community, we're under a lot of tension, right? Tension, 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 tension. So it's hard to get yourself out of that tension based training where, you know, we're right. lifting or we're pushing yeah. or pulling. Yeah. Um, and just being able to relax and kind of release and, and get that kind of gumbiness uh, mm -hmm. going on is yeah. we don't, we don't train it. Like it's not, right. it's, it's not something that is built within our training yet anyways. And it, I'm hoping that it, it does eventually get uh, incorporated because I mean, realistically our, our flexibility training, you know, for the 15 years I was in was, all right, guys, touch your toes. Okay. 
grab the ankles, rotate the ankles, rotate the wrists, off we go. And, and it doesn't really do anything for you. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not, it's not effective. Um, so as soon as I started hitting the, um, the yoga studio pretty regularly, um, I noticed an immediate difference. And, um, I know, uh, having read uh, some of the stuff by uh, some of the Navy SEALs and like, uh, their name escapes me, but um, I know a lot of the special forces dudes, like they, they grab onto yoga because they realize the benefit of it. And yeah. um, it, it just doesn't percolate all that well down to the, 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 the masses, let's say. Okay. Um, so that, that's, that's something that, you know, with writing my book, I'm hoping that there's, there's a little bit of that concept that percolates in, but again, I'm not, I'm not working on, any yoga techniques. Uh, I'm just working on uh, self myofascial release techniques. So, um, like from your end, um, there, there. I've spoken to some people about like different styles of yoga. Yeah. Um, uh, one of them that came up was Kundalini, and um, I'm just curious as to know like what what type of yoga do you focus in on? And, and, um, especially for like individuals, you mentioned like pregnant women and like people that, you know, they're just coming to kind of relax yeah. and stuff like that. Um, specifically individuals that may have, um, like the, the veteran community has a lot of PTSD issues. Um, mm -hmm. you know, are there, are there specific types of yoga that may be better, um, for the individual to, to get that kind of inner peace and to, to have some kind mm -hmm. of, uh, comfort, um, through movement that, that mm -hmm. would be very beneficial. Absolutely. I was just thinking about that when we were talking about it before, actually. I always say that yoga is for everybody. You just have to find the yoga that's for you, right? Because some people are like, oh, I can't do yoga. I'm not flexible. And I'm like, well, that's why you do yoga, to be flexible. Um, when you talk about training hard, I think a lot about yin, yin yoga, and that's for athletes. So it's um, long holds, deep stretches on the ground. Because you're always so um, tight and strong in your muscles so that you need something that's more of a release, right? We also use sometimes those tune-up balls, like you're talking about the balls with the myofascial release. They have yoga tune-up. So you take the balls and you do different, different uh, movements, whether it's getting into your spine or getting into your pelvic floor or getting into your feet, right? Um, and uh, restorative yoga, which is for everybody, because everybody needs to restore, that's a practice that you do with props, so that you set yourself up in a pose that you can stay for a really long time, and you're so supported that your muscles feel that they can relax. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Um, but a lot in North America, I think we've, because we're so like fitness-oriented, that we've made yoga very fitness-focused, right? But yoga, like there's eight limbs of yoga and the asana, which is the posture is, is only one of the limbs. So um, you need to just find something that allows you to like feel good, relax, breathe, be a good person, you know? Um, and then what you were just asking me before in regards to what my specialty is, it's uh, prenatal, postnatal. So I did a teacher training on the female pelvis with a woman named Leslie Howard. And um, just teaching about the different muscles of the pelvic floor that are very different than men. Um, the female pelvis is totally different than a man's pelvis. So the classes that I teach are for people who've either never had a baby or are pregnant, or maybe somebody who's had a baby or not at all. All you have to do is have a female pelvis to come into the class, pretty much. And... Uh, can, and, I um, can, I, can I believe that I have a female pelvis? No. I've got extra I won't ask for proof. I won't I've got ask extra you. wide hips. I think I think I'd qualify. I, I could I'd probably qualify. tell just by the movement of your pelvis that you're a man. Ah, oh, man. Okay, but I it's believe true. it though. But I believe that I have a female. I know, pelvis. but like women in their female pelvis are unstable, and what I mean is you could be weak, strong, loose, and tight all in the same pelvic floor, but a male is tight. It's hmm. pretty much it. So um, I cater a class to women who either have, are pregnant or who had babies or just really wanted to get into their, their pelvic floor. Um, I used to be in pain a, a lot in my, in my SI, in my sacroiliac. And when I got more into the pelvic floor and you realize like the sciatic, the sciatic nerve, sciatica comes from the pelvic floor, any low back pain comes from the pelvic floor. Um, and for women, our organs are supported by the pelvic floor. We don't have any bones. All we have is muscles holding. 
So if over time you're not aware of strengthening and stretching and relaxing, which is key, relaxing is key, you can have problems. Um, a lot of problems, whether things fall out, your organs can fall out of your body as a female, um, or things become painful. So I'm just kind of here to talk to women to be like, let's talk about this. Let's, um, let's all feel good and let's feel empowered, you know? Right on. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool that you mentioned that because um, like my wife is, is pregnant now with our, our, uh, our second child. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. She's yeah. due soon. Due soon. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, that's, um, that's, a, that's a real concern of, of hers as well. And um, you're, being my first female guest is awesome because uh, I, I think I do a lot of macho shit on here. So this is good uh, to definitely uh, have something for the, for, the, for the gals out there, not just yeah. talking about like, you know, all that like lifting stuff and like putting, right. like, you know, macho shit, right. face pushing and all that stuff. So yeah. um, what specifically like, um, cause you're talking about the SI joint, um, which is uh, something the that sacroiliac. I, yeah. I've had, a, I've had, I've had, that's basically where my injury came from was a super tight sacroiliac yeah. joint. Like I constantly have to work at it. Um, so structurally, like if just from, from a women's standpoint, like what exactly like, are the differences and what does like a man have to work on as opposed to like a woman to, to make sure that like that area, cause those, that area, the hip like complex area is so, 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 so yeah. crucial to um, yeah. our longevity and, and the forces and, and police and stuff like that. So what are some things that like, you know, as a takeaway that, you know, individuals can do to, to kind of keep that area moving properly? Oh man, where do I start? <laughs> okay. Um, when we sit, when we sit down, um, we are always supposed to be a little bit forward of our sitting bones. You never want to sit back on your tail. So sort of like when you see a dog or a cat sit, they lift their tail up, right? They kind of stick out their tail and then they sit down as opposed to just like falling down, right? So even when we're seated, when we're driving in the car, when we're sitting on the toilet, we have to have a neutral pelvis. I know, we're getting there. Even when you're on um, the can? Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because if you're too forward or you're too back, the the structure the bone structure of the pelvis is not protect is not allowing the organs to work efficiently right think of your pelvis think of the structure right think of how everything is supported so if you're in a neutral pelvis where you can actually engage your perineum the base of the pelvic floor that's how you want to be sitting down and the way to get into that is you could and this might sound strange but like as a woman when you're going to the bathroom you like hold it you release it you hold it, you release it. So you just start to feel like, oh, these are the different muscles. These are the different sphincters. There's different muscles in different parts of my pelvis. Oh, so when sure. people I'm says about sphincters in, already, this is awesome. When people start engaging their pelvic floor, it's like as as somebody who knows so much about it, I'm like, well, what part of the pelvic floor? What do you want me to do? I have a Pilates teacher, and he's amazing. I love Pilates. And so when he was talking about the pelvic floor, I just said to him, can you give me a cue so that I can, so that you can tell me how to engage my pelvic floor? Because I'm pretty fascinated about all this stuff. And he said, squeeze your anus. <laughs> <laughs> how do you do Like, okay, wait. Exactly. Like, like and then I think, I think I'm said, doing it right now. I'm trying it right now. Well, you I have to I... have a neutral pelvis if you're doing it, right? You're oh, not no, too I'm anterior not. tilted or, or posterior not. tilted. I'm not. Okay. Okay. I got 10% battery, but I can always go to my car. Okay, no worries. But we have some time. So when he said that, I was like, interesting, because that, as a female, that's not what my cue would be. My cue would be to feel like you're drawing your sitting bones together and up, which I know the sitting bones don't move, but it's the muscles that are connected to the sitting bones that we want to manipulate. Okay. So when people talk about the pelvic floor, they think if I squeeze everything and lift everything, then I'm working my pelvic floor. You know, Kegels, Kegel yes. exercises. Yes. That was a, a doctor. That was yeah. a doctor, a male doctor, a male doctor, Doctor Kegel. What, how would he know what it feels like to be a woman with a female pelvis to do the proper exercise? Oh no! All I, think all, that's, all I know is that I can I can stop like mid flow like nobody's business. Yeah, because you're a man and you're ma Super a strong. male. The male, well, Super strong, strong but tight. But tight. I have tight kegels. They're too tight. Should no, I? No, you're you're tight in your pelvic floor. Oh, nothing yeah. goes in. Nothing goes in and out, right? Like for like women who have babies, 
it's like a person coming out of your mouth on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> like it's kind of a big deal. And then you got to, you got to get back into the, the muscles postnatal so that you have long-term health. Right. Sure. Um, so I don't think the male pelvis is the same as the female pelvis. I think that the more that women know, the more that they can control. And I'm putting that in air quotes because it's not about a control. It's about awareness. So like one in three women have pelvic pain. I think one in four women have incontinence. It's a problem. I mean, you're looking through your magazine sometimes and there's like a woman and she's jumping and it's like her diapers and she's laughing and she's skipping rope. And it's like, if you're wearing diapers, one, you're not skipping and two, you're not smiling. <laughs> so this is something that we need to talk about. Like, let's get like really strong and stable, keyword stable in our pelvis. And that doesn't mean holding it all the time because if we hold it all the time, we get weak and we get tight, right? And then the muscle can't relax. So hmm. women who are like sneezing, coughing, jumping, peeing, it's because they're holding tension always and they don't know how to relax. So instead of thinking everybody needs to strengthen the pelvic core, everybody actually has to relax first. Then the blood flows to the muscle, makes the muscle healthy, and then you learn how to contract, relax, and stretch. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Fascin it's fascinating. It's fascinating. I, I hope my wife actually listens to this podcast. It's going to be huge. She can call me anytime. She can anytime give me she wants account. to talk okay. about the female pelvis. <laughs> we can talk about sphincters and clenching your anus all day. Yeah. This is awesome. But like today when I was doing, I had three pregnant women in my class. And all I want them to do is to know about what's going on in their body. Okay. So what, um, do you have any recommendations? Uh, as, as uh, you know, I've, I've already had one kid, another one on the way. Um, yeah. There's a lot of lifting involved, um, up and down, bending over, um, back tends to get pretty tired. Yeah. Um, so for the new dads out there, even, and the new moms, um, what's a, what's a really effective way to kind of keep, keep you from getting nice and tight? Like, how do I, how do I make sure that I don't end up with that like super tight back, even though he's like, my kid's only going to be like 10 pounds, but 10 yeah. Pounds yeah. A day adds up. So what, what, what can, what can we all be doing to. To keep that I would say, I would say stabilize yourself, okay. stabilize yourself, your stance. Think about what you're going to do before. It's kind of like when I, when you do, um, let's say when you do a, a sit up, if you actually think about the exhale, the engagement of the core and then lifting up, it's going to be way more efficient, right? You're stabilizing and then you're lifting up. So oh, in course. regards to you, like we do, like do like a bracing exercise. Like make sure that you're like locked down, pick up. Stand. Exactly. Okay. So when it's your kid, it's like it, maybe it's that maybe it's that mindfulness of like I'm gonna pick up my kid. I'm not gonna like turn one way, and then like lift up and turn another way. I gotta like find my feet, find my legs, find my pelvis, find my core, and then pick them up. Right. And also, big thing, switch sides. Don't always hold your baby on one side. You gotta alternate. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, it's true. That, that, that's a, that was a real factor. My, my shoulders started getting really sore to the point where I was getting tendonitis. Yeah. I was like, and then Man. women who are pregnant, if you think about it, like they're in a very deep anterior tilt, right? They're tilting their pelvis forward before the baby comes. Check out your wife's pelvis. And then after when they're breastfeeding, they have um, their upper back where like their, their lats are, it's rounded, right? So if you think anterior tilt, so this tail is sticking out, so there's a weakness in the low back and the belly, and now let's bring into the whole breastfeeding thing of the upper back, right? right. So it's like, it's a big deal for women to not only hold a baby, give birth to a baby, but then take care of the baby, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, you have to think about your body long-term, the health of your body long-term. So yeah. that's... <laughs> Awesome information. Um, hopefully people can apply it. But if they want to come see you to actually apply it. Okay. Where yeah, they can where come can and see they, me. Where can, they, where can they find you and get some yeah. expert? Yoga? Things? Some yeah. yoga. Yeah. yeah. Get some either hot yoga, whatever. Whatever type yeah. of yoga that okay. you're providing, where do they come to find you? Sure. So on um, Mondays, I'm at yoga, Moto Yoga NDG, which is on um, Girard and Monkland. And I currently teach a 12 p.m. moto flow class, which is like more vinyasa, more movement, a little bit more dynamic, think a little bit more cardio. 
And then at uh, 1.30, I teach a community class, which is $5 for everybody. And that's the Moto sequence. So it's very accessible to people who have never practiced yoga, who have been injured, or who are a little bit skeptical. Um, and uh, we're people who are even like, you know, hard, hard to kill. Mm, I like, I like, maybe we'll, maybe we'll have yeah. to show up, maybe we'll have to show up with a contingent. Hard to kill. And then uh, Wednesdays, I'm here at Moto Montreal, which is on Boulevard Saint Laurent. And I teach uh, 12 o'clock power, which is more, more movement, more inversions, people who like to go upside down, right? Like uh, headstand and handstands Shit, and all intense. that stuff. Yeah. I mean, people love it. That's more like a workout. And then I teach a class, Yoga Mamas, right after, which is prenatal, postnatal, and anybody who has a female pelvis. That's at 1.30 on Wednesdays. And then Fridays, I'm also at Moto Montreal, and I teach the Yoga Mamas at 11.30 and uh, a, a Moto Flow at 2 o'clock. So that's my schedule right now that's for yoga. And then when I'm not teaching yoga, I'm giving facials as a holistic esthetician. Oh, my God. Pure, entre pure entrepreneur. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so uh, where's the best place for people to find you on the interwebs? On the internet. Um, how about Instagram? Yeah. That Instagram is great because people can get in touch with you. I know you can even send a message to people. You know, um, <laughs> so we were in born the in the eighties. We were born in the eighties, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting close to forty. Sorry, Joanna. I just I just called you out, but I think they I figured know. it out from yes, but aren't we going to be those forty-year-olds who like? We're going to be cool. Up cool. their game. We're going to be cool, right? Like whether it's like physical body or the subtle body, or just being so happy. Like forty, come on, that's like a peak. We're gonna be cool. That's one of the peaks. We're gonna be cool, right? So you, and you, you know, so so, the, uh, so on the interwebs, is it? Uh, which uh, I think I have two accounts for you. So which one is it that? No. The, the, okay, so for Instagram, it's body care, but okay. it's a kind of a, a play on. Yeah, words, I'm a bit. But, I'm a bit stupid. I couldn't read that the first time. I was like, "What like, language right. is this?" I, was, I, and then I read it. I was like, "Oh, yeah. right, that's body care." Body B O D H I, which you can also pronounce Bodhi. Mm -hmm. It means the Buddha's true meaning of enlightenment. Okay, that's pretty. That's pretty you're, cool, you're, right? You're, you're always a, you're always a lot smarter than me in school. So that's and then I'm care K E R comes from the word keratin which is like your skin your hair your nails not cool i'm thinking but you body care is like what i do it's like yoga and skin gotcha and that's a and that's a really great relationship like people who are into physical fitness when you start taking care of the outside of your body to help the inside move and you might be like what is she talking about but like <laughs> dry brushing exfoliating sounds sounds intense regenerating the cells of the skin on the outside so it can move your lymphatic system it can move your blood and then it helps with purification detoxification and circulation god damn this is a whole other podcast episode it's a whole other podcast oh, but man. you can also book me for a facial at etiquette.ca e-t-i-k-e-t.ca I've, I've only I'm half at yoga and I'm half at facials. Uh, full disclosure, I've done one facial in my life. I went with my wife. Oh, She's like, you got to come. I was like, no, nah, I'm not going. She like dragged me there. I, I hated it. I freaking hated it. It was a really bad experience. You know what happened? The guy was coughing on me. He was like, <coughs> I was like, whoa. I was like, what's going on? So as long as you don't cough on my face, I think I, I, I okay. think you can get me in. You know, I, I think I can make a promise. Um, but it's not what you think it is. Like, I think facials have a bad rap. People think you're like breaking the skin and extracting things out and you leave and you have to be in the dark for a week because you're like so red it's the opposite where i work it's like you come out of a facial and it's like you need to go out and just like show off your face because you're glowing you're beautiful i promise you can make like, me i just can't beautiful. you can, I can make, make me you beautiful radiant oh wow but i will say this i think everybody who takes care of themselves is beautiful you can see it when people exercise, sleep well, eat well, take care of themselves, meditate. You know, meditation helps with uh, wrinkles because when you meditate, you have to be so relaxed in your face that all the muscles that tend to sort of like move are still. So ladies and gents, I, 
I know you have no comparison, but Jordana, you look exactly the same from high school as you do now. So I think so. I th- I'm pretty sure you're, whatever you're, whatever you're doing is working. So, um, I, yeah, that, that, that's some pretty, <laughs> some pretty solid advice. I, I have to admit though, I did apply some like without knowing, um, Again, just another full disclosure. When I was in Afghanistan, man, I moisturized the shit out of my face because I didn't want to come back looking like a leather mitt. That exactly. Was, that was a little me time. That was a little me time for myself that I took. I need, I need to plug in. I have 1%, but we can still go. Okay. Well, Jordani, you know what? Um, I, th- I think we've, we've hit on a lot of awesome uh, subjects and we covered a lot of ground. And um, I, think we can, uh, I think we can call it, call it a day. Thanks for listening to the podcast. You can find out more about training, nutrition, and mindset at DaveMorrow.net. Be sure to like us on Facebook and Instagram at DaveMorrowPT. And don't forget, strong people are hard to kill.